Come on, James. You got this. Good luck. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's winter here in the UK, which means no open water swimming. Or does it? Well, yeah, there's a few hardy souls that swim year round. In fact, cold water immersion has become somewhat of a social craze of recent years. And we thought, let's come find out more about it. No, not me. No, thanks. So that's where James comes in. Yeah, James is from South Africa. He struggles with anything below 25 degrees Celsius. This water right here is around six to seven degrees Celsius. Oh boy, is he in for an experience today. How you feeling? Genuinely terrified. Uh, honestly, sometimes I hand these videos up and do a bit of acting, but no acting is required today. You know those face your fears challenges where people are like scared of heights or spiders or snakes? Mine is the cold. I'm genuinely scared. I looked it up, it's actually a thing. It's called frigophobia. People are scared of the cold and that's me. They're really afraid of it. Well, Come on. It's not an irrational, unwarranted fear, but there is an increasingly loud voice in my head screaming, why? Why are you doing this? What are you doing here? Yeah, it'll be fun for us. Uh, I think it's time uh, you gotta get ready, de-robe, because no wetsuits are allowed for this one. This is skins, just your speedos. So, off you go. Can I keep the hair? Nope, nope. Obviously, please don't try this at home. In fact, we're actually going against the advice of some experts when it comes to cold water immersion. So what James is uh, setting out to achieve today is really not recommended. Cold water swimming comes with quite a high risk and people need to acclimatise and really think about the safety considerations before they immerse themselves into really cold water. Water today is about seven degrees, so there is a high risk of hypothermia. It's lovely and warm. <laughs> it's lovely and warm. <laughs> Lies. Lies. Oh, they're getting it. They're happy. Having a great time. Um, hang on. Liars and they're what, mad. What are these about? Yeah. So I was going to go with the fault, but I'm going to have to do toes and hands because otherwise the extremities, man. You've got to give me something. All right. I'll let you off. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to get the record anyway, are we? Who said we're going for a record? The I smile, right? We're not going to get a, an official. An official. Uh, come on. Come on. Oh, we're not getting a mile either, are we? Come on, James. You got this. Good luck. All right. <laughs> Get in slowly to avoid any cold water shock. Richard's out there. Safety. I'll be out on the suck board as well. You right? No. <laughs> I'm genuinely terrified. I'm really, really scared. Okay. Come on. Genuinely, I think if I stood out here in this weather for about five minutes, I'd be hypothermic. Never mind in the water. Okay, James is slowly okay. entering the water and then attempting a very short loop around the closest boys. And then we'll see how he's doing. <laughs> Painful. Now, there is actually an official challenge called the Ice Mile. An Ice Mile is a one mile swim under International Ice Swimming Association rules in water temperature of five degrees Celsius or less, wearing just a standard costume, goggles, and one swim hat. Unfortunately, James can't qualify for that today because it's just a tad too warm and we won't make him swim a mile. Not a chance. Now don't tell James, but it's advised you take your time and train steadily over several seasons of winter swimming in order to prepare your body for a nice mile. One of the toughest swims on the planet is not to be taken lightly. It carries the same risks as other extreme sports and can be very dangerous if you're unprepared. <sighs> <sighs> Don't really know what to say to him right now. It's kind of hurting. Look at those nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <clears throat> Easy does it. Oh, relax your breathing. I don't know what to do. <laughs> just, just get in and do a little bit of head up press straight. Don't put your head straight down. You want to get in and get moving, otherwise you will start to get. 
Holy cow! Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I'm really starting to shake. It's a shiver. Uh, you don't really well, mate. Uh, so uh, don't, don't push it. Uh, uh, so you swim back in. You always do a little out and back. Yeah. yeah. Skin is stinging. Oh. Oh. Well done, James. <laughs> okay, so not a mile then. Well, Richard, thanks so much for being our safety guy today. Um, and sorry, we are kind of um, going against some of your advice here, but we are trying to be as safe as possible. And um, but that's important because I want to actually cover cold water immersion and talk that through with you a little bit. Um, I mean, what is this cold shock response that we hear so much about? So immersing yourself in cold water creates a stress response and there's some positives and negatives of that. So getting into cold water, you get a surge of adrenaline, cold soul, you also get A-type proteins released from the brain and any form of exercise, if you're swimming, uh, you'll get some release of endorphins. So those are some of the physical and potentially mental health. And that's benefits. the things that everyone's sort of getting excited about and this yeah. kind of this hype on social media of late, people wanting to go after that, right? Yeah. But there's obviously risks to it well, as well. In reality, those benefits are really in the first two to five minutes of okay. getting into cold water. So you don't need an extended period of time in cold water. Uh, the risks are ultimately it can cause death. A, you can drown. Uh, and secondly, if you have any underlying health conditions, immersing yourself rapidly in cold water can increase your heart rate, your respiratory rate, so you can get panic attack, uh, asthma and exercise or cold induced asthma. Um, and it can rapidly increase blood pressure as well. So for someone who has an unknown underlying health condition, it can actually be fatal. Great, yeah. I can tell how invigorated you are. <laughs> invigorated. It's just healthy. It's healthy. It's healthy, do you say? Uh, am I right in saying there's um, potential risk with arrhythmia, heart yep. with heartbeats, yep. and, and also when you first get in, most people panic breathe, uh, and that can cause gasping. And obviously, if you're in water, you only need to inhale a relatively small amount of water to actually drown. Okay. So it is actually does cover with quite a high risk. So again, reason why you should gradually get in rather than diving off the side. Or, yeah, yeah. So rapid immersion will will obviously yeah. escalate that quite considerably. So I'd recommend literally taking some time getting some water onto your face, allowing your breathing to settle initially. Uh, and then once you do that, you progress into water, head up swimming, slow swimming. So you're allowing everything to calm down before you would actually start to swim. Okay. And then acclimatizing for this, which we haven't necessarily done with James. <laughs> Sorry, James. Uh, what would you do to go about this properly? So if, if I was coaching someone to train for an ice mile, they would start their cold water immersion well back in the autumn so they would gradually get used to a temperature of water that's dropping uh, and they may be able to sustain their time in the water for the same amount of time as it gets colder but ultimately they start to reduce the amount of time uh, and then regular immersion so two or three times a week for someone who's training for an ice mile uh, they may do some pool swimming to supplement that in terms of training but they do need to get used to prolonged periods of time in the water and that's a very gentle progressive acclimatization yeah. leading into the sort of real ice mile type swimming. Now James may be out of the water, but this next bit is equally as tough on the body and potentially dangerous. What I'm referring to is after drop. This is when your body temperature continues to drop even after you get out of cold water and into a warmer environment. So you can feel colder 10 to 40 minutes after you exit than you actually did in the water. As you swim, your body shuts down circulation to your skin, pulling warm blood in your core, allowing you to actually stay in the water longer. But when you exit the water, the cooling process does not stop straight away. This cold layer of skin and muscle continues to cool the core. You can lose up to four and a half degrees 
degrees Celsius from your core temperature, bringing on shivering, hypothermia, or feeling faint and unwell. So it's important to make the most of these first few minutes after getting out and to get into dry clothes and begin the warming process. However, don't jump straight into a hot shower. That can lead to sudden blood pressure drop and fainting. Well, mate, well done. Very impressed. Was it well done? I mean, I didn't cover a mile, did we I? We didn't cover a mile, but let's be very <laughs> honest here. I, we never thought. We, we were never intending on you doing a mile. I think no. that would have been very, very silly if yeah, we got you doing that. That would have been. I mean, uh, I actually probably could have gone a little bit longer, yeah. but in the interests of health and safety, decided to call it when I did because, I mean, I haven't done any acclimation whatsoever to cold water and probably never will because I'm not sure you ever get me in water that cold ever again. I don't think cold water immersion is for me. Yeah, it was very funny and I very much enjoyed <laughs> watching you do it, but I'm pleased you didn't push it because this wasn't meant to be a crazy challenge. It would have been very silly as you say, but yeah, crazy good enough, work. And you you've got yourself nicely warmed up, stayed inside, you followed all the protocols in terms of not getting in a hot shower, so good work. I didn't get too cold. I mean, I got cold. I was cold. I was shaking well, like a on. leaf afterwards, but I didn't like the after drop. I definitely did feel it. I got colder, yeah. but I didn't like it to the point where I was in intolerable. Although my feet are still really cold and they just don't seem to be warming up. So. I'm really cold actually as well. My feet are pretty cold. Yeah, uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, if you enjoyed me suffering, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. Uh, What's the next challenge that we're going to get Mark to do? Because well, he, hang on, he I've owes, done enough. He owes I've me done one enough. now. Whoa, whoa, I've done enough. <laughs> yeah. But do stay tuned because we're going to have more videos on cold water swimming, open water swimming in general, uh, just educational videos for that matter, really, just around wild open, swimming, wild swimming, yeah. open water swimming, which is you know a growing craze um, for a good reason, and we want to educate you guys. So stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed already, then do so now. See you next time.